It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies. We are entering day 10 at the Calgary International Film Festival. Directors and actors, beware, as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hey, hey. And Murray's not here. Murray's not here. Oh, well, so with the introductions out of the way, oh, let's rage on. Okay, so everybody, it is now October 3rd, and we are so excited. We have only two days left of SIF, SIFCalgary.ca, for all your film festival needs. For that's you right, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. We're also supporting our friends and family at all the horror 18 on Twitter and Instagram and scares that care.org, which is this amazing podcast festival. So if you're not listening to it, you should be because it's a great charity event and there is an amazing amount of horror filled podcasts. So check it out. What did we do yesterday on day nine? Well, Jim. thing in the morning we did a lot of streaming so much streaming yes we started our day with the new corporation the unfortunately necessary sequel the follow-up to 2003's the corporation where it was shown that corporations acted irresponsibly who knew Hmm. causing social inequality (laughs) social inequality as well as colossal environmental damage Uh, The sequel examines whether the modern-day corporation has taken any strides towards righting the wrongs of the corporation's abhorrent past. The film shows us how corporations are trying to represent themselves as champions of the environment and leaders in our communities. When, in fact, nothing has changed for the better, and in most cases, things are even worse. Exactly. (laughs) This movie is a crash course in the ways of the corporations over the last 17 years. It covers a lot, perhaps too much. That is where it loses me a bit. The film spreads itself way too thin in an attempt to cover every aspect. It looks as though this must have been in post-production as COVID-19 unleashed itself on the world as we got a tacked-on COVID-19 section at the end. Too much to digest here. This probably should have been a 10-part series where you could get each point a stage instead of giving me this rapid-fire summary that left me exhausted by the end. While the overall message of this movie was mondo, the movie itself was meh for spreading itself, as mentioned, too thin to be truly effective. That's right, like having a piece of toast with just not enough peanut butter on it. Never enough peanut butter. I know, right? Should be thick and globby with chunks of That's extra goo. Not what I, how I want my documentary movies. No, me neither. <laughs> yeah, so so I thought all or most of the corporations, like humans, are medium shitty. Meet at least medium shitty. Yes. So on review, after seeing this, I feel that most companies are extra large, or as they say in the Starbucks world, here's a plug for Starbucks, that is Vente shitty. There you go. Right? I mean, I do love hating evil companies, and this just helped to add further companies to the list of those that I hate. Started to bring that great familiar feeling of dread as this film takes on every single injustice that large world corporations deliver. I do love films that bring forward things I ultimately believe in. And I mean, who wouldn't, right? Like most of the times we we go, hey, I really enjoy this documentary. Guess why? Because they're telling me all the things I already know. And I, I, uh, I believe everything they're telling me. So it wasn't anything new to any of us. Um, sometimes though, I like to learn new things Mm -hmm. and the original corporation to me was a game changer. It moved the needle in places that I feel needed to happen. This one seemed to take on, as you had mentioned too much. And as such, I feel lost in some of the effect that it really wanted to deliver. I love the message, love that the future is looking better. There was a little bit of positivity at the end of this one, but still not great. 
gets a uh, took on too much to be effective man. Wow, we are pretty synonymous on that I one. I think so. I think yeah. I mean, the, the 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 sad thing about this is there's so many great points about this, but each one of those points could have its own documentary. That's what I. It's, it needs to be a ten part series. <laughs> yeah, like or just it's like a ten part have series this, on Netflix. Have just have this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hey Netflix or <laughs> Amazon or, or whoever. Tubi or Tubi. Yeah, let's get Tubi. Get in to do there, some, Tubi. Yeah, steal some of this this action. Because, but you know that's what I mean, right? These are Amazon. I'm not gonna buy this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, neither is Netflix. They hated them. Too. Exactly. Like it's just like no. <clears throat> what it really needs to happen is is large corporations need to start getting their shit together. Like yeah. This, there's a change coming, man. There's a change coming. And, you know, some of the docs we've even seen at this festival already, like us kids, right? And, yep. and you know, I love the fact that they threw Greta in there. Like, she's got a message that... There's a, there's a Greta documentary at the festival, you know. There we go. Well, maybe we'll have to squeeze that in if we can fit it. We got Whoa, so little so time. Much. We'll try. So much little time. It's but not out of the question. It's but. not out of the question. But, but the point I'm trying to make is, you know, the non-compliant people that sit on their couch... And don't do anything isn't what our youth of today is. And I got to give these kids kudos. Do I believe everything they're saying? And do I th believe that a 14-year-old knows the full complexities of, of corporations and how things are? But no, they, know, they can tell what the end result is. People can see that, you know what, you guys aren't doing much to help us out here. And I have to also add you're one going, last thing. You're going way off topic. I, go ahead. No, this is staying, go, <laughs> pulling us back on topic. I was Perfect. off topic, but now I'm coming back on topic. Excellent. Go for because it. Because there's a point in this movie that destroyed my love of Bill Gates. <laughs> you know my man crush on Bill Gates. Yes, I do. So I hope Bill Gates is listening. I'm sure he listens to our podcast. Mm. But because, dude, come on. Do you think for-profit schools in a country that can't afford to feed their people is a positive thing? Doesn't seem positive. It doesn't seem positive at all. So you, you won't go. be hearing me talk positively about Bill Gates until he rectifies that. Cool. <laughs> From there, we went to the Oak Room. Ah, uh, yeah, this was a this was a movie. It was a movie, Canadian movie at yeah, that, and maybe even was it an Alberta movie? I almost think it was. I don't think so but it might have been I could don't know. be i know that uh, maybe talk about it and i'll look all it right up. uh it's just guys telling each other stories in a bar that's pretty much the whole movie uh, of course there is a little bit more to it than that uh we have steve who is a bit of a loser and paul the bartender who does not care for steve for various reasons not the least of which is the fact that steve did not even come back for his own father's funeral steve this, steve this tale starts late at night in Paul's bar in the middle of a massive snowstorm. The isolation created by the weather creates a stage for this story to take place. At one point, it's clear that Steve owes Paul and perhaps others. So instead of paying Paul with money, he offers to pay him with a story. Because that is a story that Paul really needs to hear. Kind of, yeah, maybe kind of wishes he told it earlier to him. <laughs> And then Steve tells him, and I quote, a story is worth a thousand words. <laughs> uh, close enough, Steve. Anyway, from there, the tension just builds and builds as Steve tells his tale. This is an atmospheric, dialogue-driven movie that is perfectly paced with a slow building suspense and a fulfilling ending. Man walks into a bar and gets a Mondo. <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah. So first of all, it's in Ontario. So a little sad because... Yeah, it was like all the locations they were talking about was like Ontario. So I don't know why you thought it was Alberta. I don't know. I just wanted to take some ownership there. It's Fair Canada. Enough. We live in Canada. Yeah. It's not like an Alberta production kit. No. You know, but yeah, no. Thanks, Ontario. Settle in, folks. Because this, this review is worth a thousand words. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bartenders carry just the right level of rage brewing at all times. That's what I found about this movie. True that. It, they just, <laughs> all of them, they just seem, except for the one. The one that kind of lost his head a little bit about things. Mm. La I love that about it, because right away, if there's rage in a film, I'm on board. Yes. And Steve, 
You do know how to spin a yarn. <laughs> no kidding. I liked a lot about well, I, this. I didn't tell you the best part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to wait till the, the last That's the end of the five. story. Now I got to tell you the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the important stuff happens. <laughs> just so we can get it just to the right amount of time. Uh, I did really like this movie. I liked it a lot. I did not love it, though. I really did oh, like I it. I loved it. I know you did. And I'm happy because I kind of wish I loved it, too. Uh, in fact, it it couldn't have been a better ending. Like, this was literally one of the best endings yep. that ever was in any movie ever. <laughs> I don't know about that, but it I was I mean, if it's going to be the movie it was, this was this the best was ending it, was a it could ending. possibly have. And ah, we okay. don't, I'll we, give you that. We don't often say that on this show. No, we don't. Like, often we're... It's changing our rating. Like... How can five minutes change the whole feeling of a film? It's going to change my rating of a film coming up yes, later. Yes, it's going to. <laughs> I have a feeling. I hope it didn't make it to a rage, though. But that's I know which one you're thinking of. Uh, I did find it a little slower than I would have thought. Just from me. I'm not saying that it's wrong. <sighs> Perfectly I'm just paced. saying I thought the pacing was a little, was a little slow. I also found um, that some of the character development through the film as they progressed, I thought it was a pretty quick switch from going from rage to petrified. But that kind of fits a little bit because it was it, the way the way Steve maybe dropped his little nuggets yeah. to the end of it kind of was. But, I mean, he's an angry guy. He probably knows how to kill people too, so who knows? You know what? Maybe. I had a little bit of problem with that, but not a lot. So, yeah, it's definitely a great film. Definitely everybody should see it. Um, the acting I found a little reserved at parts, though. I'm really? not sure if you found that, but yeah. for me, I found a little reserved for what I thought was needed. But anyway, I get, like I said, this film was really good. There was a there was a bit of an odd <coughs> pacing to the dialogue, yeah. But it's something that I that I almost got immersed in, but about ten minutes in, initially it was just a little weird. But then it was like, nope, this is working for me. Yeah, I didn't get as immersed in it as quick as you, I think. So mm. maybe that's that's why. The best line is better the question was better than cash? I've got a story. Yeah. <laughs> Which kind of sums up the movie. <laughs> so Gets a amazing Canadian meh. Very, very high meh, by the way. And just to, to uh, reiterate, it got a mondo for me because it was so good. Spectacular in Bryce's eyes. All right. From there, we move on to Portrayal. Do we have to talk about this movie? We have to talk about this movie. That's a documentary, apparently, although it was very stagey to be a documentary. A uh, story of a man for, named Roman and some filmmakers that overreact to a practice that has been going on forever. Not that that is right, but it's something that is common. Trying to turn this business transaction into a crime against his family was silly and misguided. There are multiple ridiculous fabricated scenes where the made-up villain in this story, Oz Almog, almost comes into contact with Roman. They are walking along the same street. They are in the same restaurant. Will they come into contact or won't they? Who cares? The suspense was killing me. It was me. ridiculous. Literally killing me. There was no story here other than the story of a misguided, naive man seeking justi justice for a non-existent crime. This movie was a rage. Yeah, maybe I should just put a little bit of a, you know, just because if we feel a certain way in a movie, it doesn't mean that that's the movie, but this is our opinion. So I just want to make sure, you know, not that I'm apologizing, because if you're going to put something out that you want people to see, maybe have some other people, maybe even people in your own family watch it. Because I have a feeling even this guy's family didn't see this film. Things I liked about this movie. There was a shot of a Serbian sunset that was immaculately beautiful. It was beautiful. What else did you like, though, Jim? Nothing. <laughs> I think that was it. This doc annoyed me for pretty much most of the film. I'm on Team Max here. And for those who haven't seen this film yet, Max is his uncle, who right from the very beginning says, please don't go down this rabbit hole. Yeah. None of us want you to. But he still kept pushing. And it just kind of brings me back to, I'm not going to put this in a box that it's a specific age group of people. 
At first, I was kind of thinking that way. But I know people that is his age, Roman's age, and they don't think this way. Mm-hmm. That, you know, his whole world is hard done by. The, the, the point I was getting from Roman's thought as he goes through this movie, though, was the fact that he really just missed his grandfather. And this is the way he thought he could show him his love after his death. Guess what? He's not listening. Nope. And he doesn't care, because guess what? He fed his family off of Oz. So now you're going to fuck this guy over, who's basically supported your family for his entire life, and do something that was a business transaction, you know? And Oz, it's not like Oz isn't an artist himself. No. He just had a mass-produced production line of equipment, and he couldn't keep up with it all. So he's like, hey, buddy, I know you can't speak the language of the place you're living, blah, 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 let's shake hands, make a business transaction, we both win. Win-win. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know what? I don't want to work for the company I work for right now, but guess what? It's feeding me. Yep. Do I want to take them on and say you're evil because I don't like my job? No, I do not. So this film was painful to watch, but not because Oz was a terrible person. No. Who destroyed his family. It was a family that was perfectly happy living off the money for a business transaction. Do we think Pierre Cardin or Liz Claiborne designed everything they put their name on? <laughs> There's no, no way they did. <laughs> the, the grandfather was part of the cog in the wheel that was the Corporation of Oz. The movie, or should I say the home movie, about a successful business transaction was to me annoying and made me rage. Favorite line, though, was, I am like any prostitute. Just how much? <laughs> exactly. Words of, from Oz were never well spoken. Yes. Wise man. <laughs> you know how to make money. Absolutely. All right, sir. Did you give your rating? I said it was a rage. All right. I thought I was listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I I also just tune out when you're talking, so it makes sense. <laughs> All right. From there, we move on to My Little Sister. Switzerland. <laughs> A man diagnosed with leukemia and his sister takes care of him. <laughs> this movie had Sounds a Sounds awesome. It does, doesn't it? This movie had a lot of good performances, but it did not quite make up for the average script. The characters were fairly well developed, but while Lisa was causing her life to go into turmoil as she focused on her brother, I never really felt the sympathy that I should have for her. That was not due to the performance, but rather the fact that the writers of this painted her as someone who was defined by the people around her and it never felt as though she was able to just be herself. She always seemed to do what was expected as opposed to doing what she wanted. This was especially prevalent in her scenes with her husband. At any rate, this was a well-acted but not as well-written man. Hmm. Interesting. Swiss family... Or should I say Swiss Switzerland family Robinson. Uh Uh-huh. I love this amazing family coming apart at the seams tragedy. I love the great development of all the characters. The dynamics of the twins, in my opinion, was incredible. The little sister uh, in this has such a great, great decline into madness and loss as she denies her dying brother's condition. Swiss film, I find, and most Swiss film, I find capture the true essence of drama, and this is no exception for me. The ending, in my opinion, was perfect and gave the bittersweet finality to this film. I do not agree with anything you're saying about the dialogue because I am not a twin, but my mother was a twin. And this is basically what my mother was for the entire time that her sister was dying of cancer. So it was actually a really good journey for me to watch this from the perspective of two twins as one is dying. And I lived through this whole experience, except it wasn't in Switzerland. It was in Calgary, Alberta. And also in Victoria, where her sister lived. So, yeah, this is like I I, my my mom was living in Victoria. I'm going to take a sidebar here just to to reiterate the fact that when people are dying and even I think in a twin situation, like even brothers, like I mean, I've had a few brothers die. So it's like, you know, I was sad, but it's not my twin. Like I wasn't joined at the hip with this person. My They had a weird relationship as it was sleeping in the same bed together in this twin bed, by the way. It's kind of <laughs> nice. They were both kind of skinny because they never fit in that if it was like uh, if they were like my size. So, it, you know, I really enjoyed this. I really felt 
I agree with you 100% about your fact about that she was um, not necessarily as good as she could have been to her husband. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I, I also feel we shouldn't have felt so much for her. But I think that was the intention of the writing. And for me, I liked it. I liked the fact that, you know, we're not on side with her being this way, but she can't avoid it because of the, the, the torture that her whole mind and body is going through. So for me, this was a super duper fabulistic singing through the Alps kind of mondo for me. I totally loved it. It was it was a journey I wanted to take. Fair enough. All right. From there, we move on to my Salinger year. <sighs> Story of a young lady fresh out of graduate school. Wow, that's school. not a great start. Uh, Story of a young lady fresh out of graduate school who dreams of being a writer but gets a job as an assistant to a literary agent played by Sigourney Weaver. The scenes in the office were okay, but when we got our uh, got into our main character Joanna's personal life, the movie was a bit tedious. There are stretches of good in this, followed by stretches of bad that mainly involve Joanna's boyfriend. We rapid fire through a variety topic of topics as we explore whether it's important to make money from your art, whether it's important for people to even see your art, whether your professional life should mix with your private life, whether old ways are, of doing things are better than new methods. These are all touched upon, but, you know, what it comes down to is this a movie about writers. Should have been, you know, written better. This was a meh. Yeah, I agree. So, <clears throat> this movie inspired me to get back to my poetic, artistic past. So, I've written a poem. It's not even about this movie, but it's about New York in some way, shape, or form. All right. So, be prepared. To enjoy is some a, poetic... Is it a short poem or is this going to take a while? Well, it's not going to be as long as Last First Men. That's for sure. Last I can tell first, you that. But, oh, that movie was so good. Can we talk about that some more? No. We're going to hear my poem. Fine. Back in New York. Excited. Scared. Confused. Elated. Filled with lights. My dark soul seems more than it should. I close my eyes and my ears absorb the sights around me. Escaping more, I turn my senses inward and deprive myself of the purity I'm enveloped in, gasping, drowning, sinking, dying. I catch the bus to New Jersey and open my eyes. Well, by definition, that was a poem. There you go. Scurney Weaver, as always, was amazing. Not a fan of fourth wall or fourth wall adjacent type films in general. Ditto. Also, American-Canadian dramas are not a big part of my repertoire because I find them very formula. So this gets a pretty okay meh. Fair enough. It's just, I was wanting to like this. I mean, Sigourney Weaver was fantastic. You know what? She's one of those actresses. We've seen her in, like, most people, you say Sigourney Weaver, they go, wow, alien, right? Or, they, you know, the, because she's been in that franchise for so long. And mm. it, she's been in some amazing films that I feel really show her chops. And this one I felt really good about how she did this. I wasn't necessarily a, a big fan of the rest of the cast, per se, um, it was okay. It, they're, they're, I, they're competent. Yeah, they're competent. I mean, they did their job, but yeah, I they, didn't. They earned their paycheck. I just they it, didn't go above and beyond, but they earned their paycheck. Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty much you could predict everything that happened. Which I know, you know, maybe this is a disclaimer because me there's people out there. I mean, I bet you Murray actually loved this movie, but I I I want to be challenged in my senses when I see a movie. Other oh, not if always. I'm going to right, but if I'm going to, it's not the genre I would choose to just lose myself in triviality, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to see a drama, to me, guess what drama to me indicates? It means something dramatic is going to happen. This was pretty light and breezy. It was light and breezy, <laughs> and that's not my type of film. So, you know, 
I think they they're pretty lucky they're getting a meh actually because you know I wouldn't have <laughs> chose this at the best of times because of the you know what the script is for yeah. and if I'm gonna see a drama for the most part it's gonna be from international places because guess what they seem to just inject more dramatic everything into it. They just, you know, like when you see uh, a Korean drama, even when it's, you know, you don't know where this is coming from. You also don't know where it's going to go. This one, it was just like, it was pretty much storyboarded in my mind. Yes. Or perhaps a Greek drama. Which, yes. Which brings us to. Great transition, <laughs> by the way. I love that. All the pretty horses. This this is the sixth movie that we're reviewing. Did we do nothing else but watch movies yesterday? We still did a podcast. We did. All and right. ate some stuff. Movie number six, uh, All the Pretty Horses. This Greek movie is about a family living beyond their means and trying to create the illusion of the life they once had. There is a tension throughout this with stellar performances and a killer score. Yeah, the score was so, so amazing. Yeah. The tone and pace were perfect. It was on its way. It was on its way to being a darn near perfect movie, and then the ending happened. I didn't get it. The screen actually faded to black, and I was ready to give this rating a mondo. And then they tacked on some weird scene at the end that made little sense to me. Uh, if someone can explain that thing they tacked on at the end with the family in the car, I would, I'm going to, I would, to do I that. would greatly appreciate it. I would really like that. This movie was a meh for confusing me in the end and not in a good way. I'm going to explain it to you. But first, yep. this was a very Spanakopita flavored dread for me. I thought it was pretty damn delicious mm -hmm. all the way through it. There was so much dread and so much depression. Oh, it was perfect. It I was, was so, it so it was much. so perfect. I loved how they, they threw the film. They're kind of like... And you kept saying, someone's going to die here. Someone's going to die here. And I'm like, I don't think they are. I think they're just going to drag us along for a bit. First, you're going like, that kid's going to die in the pool. And then you're like, she's going to die in the pool. And then there's a scene where you're like, one of them's going to kill each other in the pool. Like, there's so many pieces this, in this. This is not an accurate portrayal of what I was doing, by the way. You but. were using, you were saying, someone's going to die in this. I can feel it. But, not in those very words, but, but not yes, exactly. I, I'm paraphrasing. And, and not in the the uh, the uh, hyper excited way that you're doing it. <laughs> but I mean, we were excited about it. Yeah, we were like, well. but but the the point I'm trying to make is this built yep. very dreaded suspense. It, like it did. you, we didn't know what was going to happen. They would put these little things, like they put a they put a a well in the scene, you know. Other places, people wouldn't have put that in the movie, but it became a pinnacle part of the movie. Oh, you see, the, well, this well's got to come into it. Someone's going to fall course, into the well. Of course, someone's going to fall in the well, and the kid <laughs> keeps going over there. He's like, this kid's going in the well. Like, it, if this was an American-Canadian film, this the kid probably would have fell in the well. And so the reason yes. that I think that they added that extra ending was just for... The North American audience. That's for me. They, they. This is not a traditional Greek tragedy, no. or it would have ended where we thought it went when it went black. Even then, it's not really. But it was still, yeah. I still don't know what's going to happen. Like this, no. it was kind of like I, I love the movie all the way until the the very end. I still love the movie right up until the end, but I did have a couple of problems with it. So much Greek tragedy, but ended American style. Yeah, almost like. Well, they, they weren't even wearing the same clothes, so I don't understand what happened. Like they had I, a shower. I, they all took a they shower. They all took together. a shower at the ladies. They plate. cleaned up. She. They no. had to bury her dog. They didn't show all that. I mean, yeah. you, you think they're just, they just? They obviously told her they killed her dog, and then they're just like, okay, well and then now. She's like, oh well, go use my shower. Of course. I, I mean, they've that. been using her house for like an entire movie, uh, which could have been months, years even. I don't get it. Gets a slow, 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 slow downhill unhinging meh for me. I did want to give this a mondo, but there was a couple parts that yes. kind of caused me, and the ending was one of them. Indeed. So All we've right. got another full day ahead of us today. So... Be prepared for tomorrow, people. Oh, we're tomorrow. Gonna, we're going to watch as many movies as we can cram in. I don't even know how many it's going to be. Neither. It's going to be a surprise to us all. So thanks, for Ragers, for listening. Thanks to the extended film rage crew of Leonard Conlon for his artistic vision and photography via Leonard Conlon Photography. Also to our man, Merman, who is 
as he said yesterday, I am spent and done. But he's still working like a dog. Listen to us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And you can find us all at FilmRageYYC and on our website at FilmRageYYC.com. We are always wanting your feedback to make this a raging blast for all listeners. So please comment often. And if you can't do that, at least make us rage. That's it for today. Check in tomorrow. Rage on. Rage on. Rage on.